Good morning. Did it come? Is it there? Can you hear me? Okay, there we go. Good morning, everybody. It is a great day to be in the Lord's house. I'm excited about today and uh, the, the exciting things that we have for you today. We have the MBSF with us. That's our Missionary Baptist Student Fellowship. They're going to be leading us in worship today. Brother Daniel is our MBSF director. He's going to be preaching. So this is our college ministry in Arkadelphia to the campuses of Henderson and Washington Baptist University. And uh, so we're excited about that. And um, so we'll, we'll get them up here in just a moment. Tonight at six o'clock is the Lord's Supper. So those of you who are church members, we encourage you to be back at tonight at six o'clock for Lord's Supper service. And this is a, it's a full worship service. So we'll be here uh, for that tonight. Uh, because of that, we're going to move our um, orchestra and choir rehearsal to just one rehearsal at five o'clock. So orchestra and choir is gonna meet at five together and uh, we'll just work on our Easter stuff. And uh, speaking of Easter, that is April the 9th. So mark that on your calendars. If you haven't already, it's coming up quickly. So uh, we need to be ready for that. Next Sunday is Daylight Savings time. So go ahead and I know most of you, your, your phones change for you and everything automatically, but some of you still have to set your alarm clock. So make sure that you do uh, for next Sunday. So that's daylight savings time. Uh, membership class. If you are um, a guest uh, with us, which I want to welcome you here in just a moment, but uh, the membership class will be uh, March 26th and that's a lunch. So if you're interested in information about our church and the membership process, how to become a member, this is the, what that's, that, that is for. So it's March 26th um, for, uh, at noon, and it's a free lunch for everybody that wants to come and, and find out more about Center Fork and, and our membership process. So in, in light of that, uh, mentioning that, if you are our guest this morning, we want to welcome you to our service and let you know that you are an answer to our prayers, and we hope that we can be an answer to your prayers uh, today. If you have not done so, please stop by the Connect desk. That's right out in the foyer, and uh, they can there will be someone there to... Uh, just get your information and hand you a little gift packet with information about our church and answer any questions that you might have this morning. Uh, you can also register as our guest with, uh, through our website. You can, there's a QR code in the bulletin. You can scan that with your phone and register online. Uh, or there's some guest uh, registration cards in the pews. You can fill one of those out. Or just, again, stop by the Connect desk and they can get that information from you. If you have an offering this morning, as always, there's an offering box here and one back behind the Connect desk. Uh, you can also give online via the website. Uh, you can mail it in or drop it by. Uh, and please do, if you haven't done so, just every once in a while, once in a while, we want to remind you we're on Facebook, uh, Center Fort Baptist Church uh, on Facebook, and you can connect with us there. Also on YouTube, all our services are, once they're edited and everything, they're uploaded to YouTube, and that gives you a chance to go back and watch anything you might have missed or want to see again. All right, I think that's all the announcements we have this morning. We're going to start things with the word of prayer, and then we're going to turn this over to Bryce Kreisel. I did it right. Did I do it right? I did it right. Yes. I was thinking this morning, I was like, because I've been calling him Krizel for a long time and he's corrected me. It's Chrysler. And I was like, okay, it's Chrysler. So yeah, I got it. Good. Turn it over to Bryce and the MBSF uh, worship team. They're going to, to do that right after this prayer. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you so much for the time to come together to worship you. Lord, we thank you for uh, our MBSF ministry, these college students who uh, are so dedicated to you and, and uh, living their lives for you, even on, on their college campuses. Lord, we just praise you for them and, and we praise you for this ministry. We ask that you would bless this worship time now. Help us to uh, truly worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, I, I pray for those that are on our hearts this morning. You know each one, you know each need, and we lift them up to you and pray that you would have your will and your way in each and every life. Life. Lord, we thank you so much for loving us and for being so gracious to us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. If y'all would like to stand, you can stand. If you'd like to remain seated, you can remain seated whichever way you feel comfortable worshiping us with us this morning. But join us as we sing. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness. Find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that He gave us His one and only 
down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where the cleansing sin I cried. There to my heart lies a blood of mine. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart lies a blood of mine. So so hard to find somebody that'll play that thing. And so he's been coming over every once in a while playing for us this year. And appreciate him doing that. Appreciate you, Bryce. He's gonna graduate, folks. That's good. Yeah. I'm I'm glad he's gonna finally make it. <laughs> he did it in four years. Amen. Yeah. But he's he he's he's been he's been challenged by that music program at Washita. I I'm so uh, so blessed to have been able to see what God has done with him. I'm gonna start crying um, the last couple of years. And so he's been been kind of my right hand. Appreciate you, man. For those of you who don't know, this is Lydia. She's on our leadership team at MBSF, and she plays the harmonica pretty well. Amen. Yeah. Courtney, Courtney is a former leadership team member. She still comes to MBSF, but see, she graduated in three years. Amen. Smarty pants. <laughs> and, uh... She still hangs around with us, and I'm th so thankful for that as well. Um, so, uh, so thankful for these students. We have several others sitting over here, but they're shy. I'm not going to embarrass them. But y'all come over and greet them after church today and, and get to know them. Uh, appreciate them being here uh, as well. Uh, so thankful for this opportunity to be able to celebrate MBSF and, and the work that we have there. Uh, y'all are, you know, y'all are our sponsoring church. And that means a lot to you and it means a lot to me. It means a lot to our students. We try to communicate uh, to our students. I try to communicate to our students what you mean to our family, what you mean to this ministry. And uh, so, so thankful for you. Uh, we, uh, we're about three months into this semester here. 
I think by weeks it's probably about two months, but you know, it's March, you know. Number three, number three months. I know I, I can count that, okay? Um, this has been, uh, me and Brittany have been talking about it. Uh, I want y'all to pray, pray for us. These students right here are great, but this semester has felt very different than we've experienced in a while. And uh, just, I, I can't really put my finger on it. It's just different. It, it's, it's been kind of slow getting, getting people motivated. And uh, we've had a lot of things going on in different, uh, you know, different situations going on in the lives of our students. And um, we just want you to pray for that specific need for us and, and kind of remember that in your prayer life. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you what's kind of on my heart in that area. Uh, this fall was probably the best fall I've ever had and the uh, most fun I've ever had with our students. And so that just may be it. Winter hit and everybody's like, bleh, you know. You know, you know how y'all get. You know how we get. I get that way too. And so sometimes it just, it takes a little while for the sun to shine and spring to get going. Oh, it's not my problem. I should have just used this one. Yeah, he was like, I was like, how are you getting him at all? He said, good when that mic you pushed away. <laughs> yeah. We good now? Well, I guess, I mean, oh. Now you should be good. Thank you. There we go. Everybody, be yeah, that's better. Hey. I'll start all over, okay? <laughs> We're going to play this video. This, this video <laughs> is, so... I already talked about Bryce a little bit. He's from Second Baptist in Malvern. And just about every year, Second Baptist asks me for some type of promotional video to show during their faith promise giving. And uh, I'm just, uh, I'm thankful for that. But I got tired of filming a little silly video in, in like my carport uh, with a weird, you know, like it was a horrible background and the sound quality was awful. Because uh, I'm basically just doing a selfie video, you know. And so uh, it, was, it was needed. And then we have some other churches that have uh, shown some interest in having that as well. And uh, it's also something that I'd like to have that we could play when I go and, uh, to like AYC coming up, setting up a booth there, our state meeting. And uh, there's some other, some of those churches that showed interest in it, uh, wanted to play it in their foyer as people walk in. And so... Um, we have that we're going to show in, uh, in right now, and that'll kind of be my report to you today, uh, other, than, other than the prayer request there that I mentioned, and uh, just uh, thankful that our services are going well on Tuesday. We've got great life groups going on, and, uh, and our Wednesday, uh, Thursday lunch was, has been really good the last two weeks. Uh, we had pizza this week, which I thought, man, nobody wants to eat pizza, but they came, they ate it. Uh, it wasn't as good as the week before. We had a church cater, a Mexican restaurant in town. And man, I'm telling you, we, they catered a bunch of food. We ate that on the, on the spring retreat we had this last weekend. And uh, I took some home with me. It was so good. I had a great ca crowd come out that day for our meal. So keep praying for our weekly services and events. And I uh, want to just thank you again for your love and support and prayers. Let's play that video and let you guys see that. Hey, I'm Daniel Ward. I'm the MBSF director in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. MBSF stands for Missionary Baptist Student Fellowship. We serve on the campuses of Henderson State University and Washtenaw Baptist University. And we're supported all over Arkansas by Baptist churches, Missionary Baptist churches like you. And we just want to take this opportunity to give you an update on what God's doing here in Arkadelphia. The students that we have, we uh, have a purpose to train them with the gospel ministry. They're here on our campus and we disciple them to reach their fellow students and to reach this community of college students to the best of our ability and for the glory of God. We have several ways that our students participate in our ministry activities. We have a worship service on Tuesday night called Ascend Worship. And then we have a lunch on Thursdays called Ascend Lunch. And through those two ministries, we're able to make connections with students. 
Aside from that, we also have a guys Bible study that meets at Monday night that I lead. And then we have a Thursday night Bible study for our girls. My wife, Brittany, leads that Bible study. But we've seen great turnout for those ministries at well. We do retreats, fall and, and spring retreats. And occasionally we have a mission trip. We've got a great sponsoring church in Center Fork Baptist Church in Hot Springs. So thankful for their uh, loving kindness to support this ministry faithfully and take care of me and my family. We want you to follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook at Arkadelphia MBSF or on Instagram at at MBSF. And we uh, want you to know that if you ever need anything, please reach out and contact me or contact our sponsoring church and we'd be happy to come visit you on a Sunday and give you a more detailed report. But I hope this was an encouraging one for you and we wanna thank you for your prayers and support. God bless. Amen. We're gonna to continue to worship this morning through song, so if y'all join us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun.
when the music fades all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's the word that will bless your Father, we're so thankful for this day and this time that we've been able to gather together and worship you freely. And God, I pray that our worship would not stop here with music, but God, we would continue to worship you through the study of your word. And Lord, I pray that we wouldn't forget what we we're told this morning, Lord, that we would take it out to our fellow communities, God, and that we would just uh, share the love of Christ with them that we have been shown. And Lord, I pray that you be with Brother Daniel as he brings us your word. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are you thankful this morning it's not about you? I, uh, I want you to know in that video there at the end, most of you already know and probably do this, but you do follow us on social media. I hope that you do. We're pretty, me and Brittany try to be pretty proactive at posting about everything we do and Brittany does a great job of making sure pictures get posted so churches that send us students can see what their students are doing and have an idea and then also their parents and then also you uh, so you know what we're up to. Uh, I was uh, 
And I'm thankful, if, did, if y'all didn't hear me say it, I'm thankful, Caleb, for helping me with that video. I, I thought it turned out really great. And I know there may have been some others that con- contributed but uh, that I don't know about, but uh, I'm, I'm pleased with that. And um, I hate, I, I told Caleb this, I hate that when we filmed me talking, I was uh, about a week into some sinus stuff that turned into pneumonia. And uh, I, was, I finally got on some medicine. Brother Sean, you know what that's like. Finally got on some medicine uh, about, a, about two weeks ago. And uh, we, went, we went to the Buffalo River for our retreat, our spring retreat. And uh, I was feeling all right. Just started finishing a steroid pack. And uh, we went to this uh, trail to hike. It's called Eden Falls, if any of you have ever been to it. And so we're hiking this trail, and it's, it's pretty, it's all right. You know, it's gravel path, pretty flat. And then as you get to the back of it to see the waterfall, you have to climb a mountain. And uh, I was doing my best, you know, hanging back, just kind of letting, letting everybody go and have fun. And then, I, and then I had to kick it up, and I think I probably made it worse. Uh, I've been, my throat's been really dry. So y'all pray for me this morning, I can talk a little bit and not uh not choke up here um all my words and but anyway uh I I, I want to preach to you this morning on a passage that my opinion is just I, I feel like it's kind of overlooked and maybe it's just it was overlooked by me uh it's a very straightforward passage this morning but uh, we look at the scriptures in this passage, we're going to see a big message about the Christian faith that we should have in God, belief in him. We worship the one true God that created everything with the spoken word. Life was brought into man with a breath from him. A mighty God, a powerful God, a big God. And he daily does mighty and great things for us that we miss sometimes, kind of like this passage. Things that we don't necessarily pay attention to that we should. Miracles that are all around us. God's working right in front of us and we miss it. So I titled this message, Are You Believing Big? And in this passage, I think that we see a person that believes big in God. That being said, I want to ask you another question this morning. Do you believe God can do big things? Are you on board with that this morning? You believe God can do big things? And when I reflect on that question, a, 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 couple, of, uh, a couple of passages came to my mind in Scripture. Some of these, uh, Brother Scott and, and the staff has already preached on, and uh, one of them, it, it, I'm sure it's going to come in just a few few weeks because you, you just finished 14 in Matthew, right? So it's 15's coming. Um, the first one was in Matthew 8, the faith of the centurion. It's a really powerful story there. This centurion, this soldier comes to Jesus asking for his servant to be healed. And then Jesus, uh, you know, is told by the centurion, I'm not worthy to have you in my house only say the word and my servant will be healed and it says that Jesus marveled at his faith marveled at his faith he said in all of Israel no one in Israel have I found such faith marvel at his faith the encounter is closed by Jesus telling him go Let it be done for you as you have believed. And then my favorite, one of my favorite, it's not just my favorite in Matthew, but it's one of my favorite passages in all of Scripture. It's Matthew 15. And uh, Jesus is confronted by uh, the faith of the Canaanite woman, the Syrophoenician woman, modern-day Lebanon is where she's from. And she had a daughter that was being oppressed by a demon. And Jesus rebukes her three times. But she persists. She keeps on 
following after Jesus, uh, pleading for him to give her attention to her need. And finally, Jesus says, oh woman, great is your faith. Great is your faith. And he heals her daughter just with the spoken word. And then he closes that that, uh, confrontation, that encounter again with the words, be it done for you as you desire. And then in Matthew 9, I thought about the two blind men that came to Jesus seeking to be healed, their vision restored. And Jesus tells them, according to your faith, be it done to you. And they were healed. Powerful passages there that speak of faith and how the faith of some kind of unexpecting people were really the faith that God admired. And I believe that we see that in our text this morning. When we survey the Bible and history, we know that God did great, amazing things in the Old Testament. We see that he did great, amazing things in his ministry, in the New Testament with the early church. God was moving, God was working. Maybe this morning you've come to church and you can think, when we ask these questions, you can think about ways maybe God has worked in somebody else's life a friend that you have, a family that you're close to. Maybe this church or another church, you can think of times where God has moved, done great things because people have had faith in him. But maybe this morning you're saying, I don't really feel like God is moving in my life. Maybe God's not working in my heart. And I would just ask you, I'm asking, do you believe God is doing big things with you? Does he want to do big things with you? Is there faith for what God can do right now with us? God is wanting, I'm telling you, God is wanting to marvel at your faith. He's wanting to admire the faith that you have in him, the big believing faith that you can have in a big God. So in our text this morning, we turn to 2 Kings 1 through 7. Turn there with me. We're going to read this passage. 2 Kings, verse 4, 1 through 7. Short, short verse of scripture here. It says, Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elijah, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. But the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. And Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in your house? And she said, your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, go outside, borrow vessels from your neighbors, empty vessels and not too few. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons and pour into these vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. So she went from him and shut the door behind herself and her sons. And as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, She said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on the rest. It's my prayer this morning that you can answer that question, are you believing big? And I believe that we can see some things in this scripture on how this widow, how she was believing big. And so I want, to, I want you to look at this passage. I want you to underline some of these thoughts and some of these words as we go through here. God's word speaks to us wisdom and knowledge of what big belief in God looks like through this passage, what big belief in God looks like. I want you to notice that this woman had a big time 
serious detrimental problem in her life. Travis Tritt would call it T-R-O-U-B-L-E, all caps. Big trouble. She cried out. She cried out for help. Her problem was so big. Have you ever had a problem so big that you cried out for help? Her husband, her protector, her spiritual leader, her provider had died. At that day and age, the husband was the main provider and caregiver for the family. I don't believe that should have ever changed. She's without her husband. Now tradition of some of the rabbi's writings, the historian Josephus, they tell us and and, and they believe that this woman's husband was most likely Obadiah. You can read about Obadiah in 1 Kings chapter 18. Obadiah was an interesting guy. He was a servant of the prophets. He had a, he had a, uh, Big ministry there in in 18. He lived during that time of Jezebel and Ahab, just like Elisha and Elijah. And really dealt with a a, a big problem in Israel where many people, especially the leaders of the kingdom, did not believe in God. They did not have big faith. They didn't have any faith probably at all. One writer called it the apostate Israel. Israel. They had turned from God and turned to other idols. She tells Elijah, she says, the creditor's coming. Have you ever had the creditor call you? I have. Kind of makes you nervous, doesn't it? They're wanting something from you. Normally it's something that's going to Take a lot of your time, take a lot of your effort, take a lot of your hard-earned money, cash. That's what the creditor wanted from her, money she owed. And he was going to take her sons away. I can't imagine. Daniel, you owe me a debt, give me your daughters. Over my dead body. And she felt that way too. That ain't happening. There's got to be a solution. She cried out for Elisha. And by crying out for Elisha, she was crying out for God. I hope you can see that as we go through this. The Mosaic law tells us that this was part 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 of the law. This creditor had every right to come, take her children, and they work off their their debt until the year of Jubilee, and then they are able to set them free. Now, the year of Jubilee, depending on when this happens, could be far away, it could be close. But the other side of that is the Mosaic Law also teaches the children of Israel to take care of widows, not take advantage of the widows. So in this situation, I think the creditor's wrong. He should have kept his mouth shut and blessed this woman by not making her pay that debt. But as life is, as it is now, it happens, doesn't it? These situations come. As God's people, we have to be ready to deal with it. Rich people and creditors were not allowed to take advantage of the poor or the widows. She says to Elisha's question, what do you have? She says, I don't have anything. I have nothing in the house. I don't really know what that means. I don't know if she sold all the furniture trying to raise money to pay off this debt and the house is just empty, but she does have one thing, this jar of oil. Probably belonged to her husband. It was probably used for anointing. Maybe it was that one thing on the shelf she just couldn't part with. She had seen her husband use it time and time again because it was one of the ways God worked through him in his ministry. No way to pay her debt, but she had a jar of oil. Actually, the text says an oil jar, doesn't it? Maybe the jar was empty. Maybe just a few drops left. So she turns to the Lord and his representative on earth, the prophet Elisha. The way it worked then was the prophet of God is who spoke 
for God. And he spoke the words that God told him to speak. He heard the audible voice of God and he spoke those words boldly, clearly. And it was very clear that she knew how that worked. She knew where to go to go for help. The king wasn't going to help her. The creditor wasn't going to help her. She cried out to Elisha. She cried out to God. Look at, look at her obedience. Look at her obedience. She was obedient and she expected God to bless her for her obedience. She did what she was told to do and she obeyed. She trusted that God was going to take care of her. There's a hymn that we sing that bears a similar thought. Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. The Good News Translation puts Psalm 33 verses 18 through 22 in a way that I thought was unique. It says, the Lord watches over those who obey him, those who trust in his constant love. He saves them from death. He keeps them alive in times of famine. We pour our hope in the Lord. He is our protector and our help. We are glad because of him. We trust in his holy name. May your constant love be with us, Lord, as we put our hope in you. Are you believing big? Do you see how this woman was believing big? She persevered, didn't she? She didn't stop pouring the oil. She had done all that she could, and she did all that she was supposed to do. Look at, look at how she related to her sons. She had her sons right beside her the entire time. Find that admirable. She had her sons right beside her so that they could witness God's provision. It was important that her boys were not robbed of a blessing. She was a good parent, good mother. She knew God helps the helpless, and she makes full, that God makes full the empty. I'm sure at this time in her life, she felt as empty as the containers she borrowed. Maybe as empty as that jar of oil in her house. Maybe as empty as her house. Her life was a sum of emptiness. She had nothing. But the difference was that at the end of the day, she still had a big faith. She was still believing big. And I, want you to, I don't want you to misunderstand that statement. When you believe in God, you are believing big because God is big. She had seen, she had heard throughout her life, seen as her husband served the prophets, as her husband served the Lord and feared the Lord, time and time again, she knew God was her answer to her problem. Psalms 118, 6 through 7 says, the Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. Did you know the Lord wants to help you? Matter of fact, one of the Trinity is called the helper, isn't he? Yeah. Holy Spirit. If you're a believer today, you have the Holy Spirit in your life, guiding you, wanting to help you. And maybe this morning trying to help you to believe big. An old saying that I've heard time and time again in various ways by preachers, God is not the God of barely enough, but the God of more than enough. He doesn't just bless, does he? He blesses abundantly. He doesn't just love us with the basic kind of love, but the deepest, most profound love. He doesn't just give to us in a simple way, but in a big way. So I want to ask you, how can we believe big? How can you know that you're believing big like this woman? How can we live this out in our life? 
just like this woman cried out. She wailed out to God for her problems. So do we. Let God have your problems. Are you doing that? Are you letting God have your problems? Just like this woman, we recently studied this in our guy's life group. With humility beginning the process of escaping worldliness and turning back to godliness, Hebrews 4.10. We've been working through James with our guy's life group on Monday nights and we came across this verse and we studied it. He, uh, Hebrew, I already said, James 4.10, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. She humbled herself. She didn't let, let this, uh, this problem hold her back. She knew that she humbled herself to the Lord. When she submitted herself to the Lord, things would begin to change for her. We see this pattern with the widow. She humbled herself and found God, exalting her out of her trial. God exalted her. It's time for God's people to humble ourselves before an all-powerful Lord who cares, rescues, and loves us back to a place of stability. 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7 puts it this way. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God and He may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. The proper time for this widow was when she started to obey by giving her anxiety, her trouble, her humility to the Lord. Have the Christian maturity this morning to give your cares to the Lord who wants to help you, who wants to work in your life and do big things for you. I think with this problem of humility though, the problems we face in this world, we we have two major pitfalls that we fall into. One, I I put it this way, in kind of a silly way, but don't take the bitterness bait. Don't let bitterness consume you when circumstances get bad, when trials are presented and times are tough. When bitterness takes a hold of your heart, you start swirling down a hole that has no bottom, folks. And our enemy, Satan, gets right up in our ear, feeding that lie, wanting you to stay in that place of bitterness. You start by feeling sorry for yourself, and then you start feeling jealousy maybe even hatred for others. I like, I like how Paul put it in Ephesians chapter six. Our enemy is Satan, the devil. Our enemy is not flesh and blood. You're not my enemy, I'm not yours. Christian people, our family, our church family, we, that's not how it works. Satan, the devil, is our enemy. We're fighting against him and his forces. We're fighting against our flesh. Things unseen. Don't let bitterness consume you. Second, don't think that you can figure it out or solve your own problems. This is another pitfall that leaves you angry, exhausted, and hard-hearted. I've been there probably like you have. Think that I know more than anybody else on how to fix the problem, sometimes even God. And I get to work and I pour myself out trying to figure it out, trying to work it, work it out, trying to make it fit into the, the thought that I have, the thinking that I have. Ephesians chapter three. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond All that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Give your problems to God. Let him have your problems. That's the first step. You want to believe big this morning? Give your problems to God. He's the only one who can solve them. He's the only one who knows how to work them out. I would also tell you this morning, 
don't discount what you have. Elijah asked the woman what she had in the house, and she said, your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. It's not much. Some might say very little. But she was willing to offer it up. Anything she had, and it wasn't much, but it didn't matter that it wasn't much. Because God can take the small thing, the little thing, and do big things with it. Her big belief that God could solve the problem was enough. God works in the simple details, in the small things, and it's usually in a way that doesn't make any sense. He told her, go, go pour this empty jar that you have into other empty jars, and your problems are solved. That doesn't make sense to me. It's like when Jesus had a similar situation at the wedding at Cana. You remember that story? They ran out, ran out of the wine, maybe grape juice, whatever you want to say there. And Jesus says, go fill them up with water. What? We don't want water. We want the good stuff. Fill them up with water. And the disciples, this is one of their first tests, isn't it? They had to do what he said. And sure enough, with the, with the, with the power that only God can accomplish and, and do, that water turned to wine. God may ask you to do some things that doesn't make sense. But are you willing to obey? Are you willing to use what you have? It doesn't matter that it may not be much. It may not be anything at all. I remember a, another woman in the Bible that Jesus marveled at her faith and it was the one that just had one might. But she gave all she had, didn't she? What a blessing that must have been for her. I love the story of Jesus being anointed at Bethany. Mary, the sister of Lazarus. She's learning at Jesus' feet. She's listening to what he's saying. And all of a sudden, it just clicks for her. And she realizes, he's going to die for me. And she wanted to bless him. She wanted to give something to him for the great gift that he was going to give her. So she goes and gets her a little alabaster box, something that was very precious to her. Would be precious to anybody at that time. And she busted all over Jesus to the where the, the whole house smells like that perfume that she had. Jesus marveled at that. Y'all leave her alone. Leave her alone is what he told the disciples. She knows what she's doing. This woman in our text in 2 Kings, this is exactly what she did. She gave what she had. She didn't discount that little jar. She said, well, I've got this jar. She knew that if she gave that to God and blessed him with that, he would bless her. Remember, God is wanting to use what you have. And don't think that he can't. Don't discount what you have. He can use what you have. Big or small. He's still bigger than that. Believe he can take your small measure of faith and do big things with it. A lot of small things add up to what? A big thing. Give the big stuff and the little. Don't just discount what you have. God wants to use it. That little time you spend with your children teaching them about Jesus, that, that moment before you have a meal and you pray with your family, the Bible study maybe that you do, the times you come to church, those moments add up over time. 
Those people that you admire in this world that have big faith, it started with little things. Giving little things, not discounting the little things that they had, the little moments, the little amount of money, the little amount of family that they had. And God blesses it, grows it, and does amazing things with it. This is not a new concept to y'all. We just paid off a building. With big offerings, as a church, collectively, but when you fraction that out, it's little people who gave little things, and God took it and did big things with it. You think God wants to stop now? Are you believing big? Does God want to stop now, or does he want to keep blessing what we give him? Next thing I want to share with you, third thing, how can you believe big? Trust by doing what God tells you. Trust in him by doing what he tells you to do. We see some commands in our text. Go outside, borrow, not too few. Then go back inside, shut the door. Poor. Poor. Set the full ones aside. All this was for a reason. It was part of the process. God's word is coming to us through this widow, through this story, through Elijah to her. We read it. She knows it is God instructing her. I hope you know that this morning, that he's wanting to instruct you. She does exactly, she does literally what she's told to do what God had commanded her. She shows trust that by doing what she is told, it will work out. The problem will be solved. Another way of putting this is obedience. Real faith is put into action. That action that we do, big, believing big requires us to do and to go for God. That's obedience that we express there. There is a pattern in Scripture. Obedience leads to blessing. People obey God and God blesses. It never works the other way. People obey, God blesses. We can trust this process. Remember, I like watching the ESPN uh, show uh, Peyton's Places. Some of y'all may have seen it. If you hadn't, it's okay. His little brother Eli has one with, with colleges, and he goes around and sits down with coaches and various play, players, looks at history of football, and I'm a big football guy, so I love the show. This show's right up my alley. I remember when he went to Alabama, he asked Coach Saban, Nick Saban, what works, what is it that works here? Why are y'all having so much success year after year after year? And he says, we just tell our play, players all the time, trust the process. Don't get ahead of yourself. Just do what you're supposed to do and it'll work out. You think about it, you watch that team play, there's times where they're down. They're getting beat, but their players don't give up. They trust the process. They keep listening to their coaches and do what they're supposed to do. And they win over and over and over again. And when you read scripture, that's what you see. God's people obeying him, no matter how crazy it may be, And they seem like they're down and counted out, but they win. God blesses. He doesn't give up on you and me, so he expects us not to give up on his instruction. Don't give up on him. People obey God and God blesses. We can trust this process. It's proven time and time again. And our fourth thing, How do you know you're believing big? Do not discount what you have. Let God have your problems. Trust by doing what God tells you. And last, I want to share with you, don't limit the blessing. Don't limit the blessing. She says, bring me another vessel. Phrase there in the scripture. She's also told... 
by Elisha, go to your neighbors. Am I right? Or is there a big word there before that? Look at it. Does she go to a few neighbors? Just the neighbors she's closest to and knows? She goes to all the neighbors. All of them. Don't limit the blessing. The widow did not want to stop pouring. She didn't want to stop asking her neighbors, can you loan me an empty vessel? There might have been some who turned her away, but she was to go ask. She went, she collected. She started to pour and she didn't stop until she had to. And can you imagine her in that situation? Even when she had to stop, do you think she wanted to? She was probably thinking, I should have went to the next town and asked all those neighbors. And that's happening to you and me all the time, isn't it? God starts blessing, we're like, man, maybe I should have done more here. Maybe I should have gave a little more effort, pushed a little further. Because we know God would have done more too. I said real faith is put into action. Real faith also goes for abundance. It looks and expects for abundance. Another pattern seen in Scripture over and over is that God begins to give abundantly. And when we do our part, we start giving. He gives abundantly. Jesus said this, Luke 6, 38. Give and it will be given to you. When we start giving, that's when God starts giving. How many blessings are we missing out on because we stop short? We start short of loving our enemy. That's one that don't make sense to me, but Jesus has told us to do it. We don't see very often in this world today enemies becoming friends. Why? Because Christian people have stopped loving their enemy. We're falling short. We're not going for the full blessing. Trying to relate, trying to compromise, trying to work it out. God working through you to change somebody else, to get someone else's attention so that he can go to work on them. We forget about the spiritual condition of all of our neighbors. There's a reason why he tells her, go, ask for these empty vessels. Why? Because we have neighbors who are empty too. They need to be full. Don't limit the blessing. Don't fall short. Keep going. We're leaving blessings out in our neighborhood all the time, across the street, next door, just because we think we don't get along with somebody. We don't like them. It doesn't matter what you think. Jesus said, go to all the world. Go to your neighbors. Don't leave blessings out there. Claim them. Let God work. Have big faith that he can change people's lives. How about this one? Missing church for lesser activities. How many blessings have we left here in the church and never experienced because we chose something else that wasn't as important? I had to preach this to myself first. Just prayer and Bible study as families. We leave those little blessings behind us all the time. One of the things that I enjoy most as a father has been able to teach my children to pray. And hearing them do that at an early age, it was short and sweet, which was kind of good when we were hungry. <laughs> but they're getting better at it. They're starting to tell God what's on their heart. Sometimes Especially with Mabry, I don't, I don't understand what she's saying, but I know she does, and God definitely does. Teaching them the Bible, them sitting in the back seat of our Jeep while me and Brittany, and we're driving and we're talking about spiritual things. Melody's listening. We leave those blessings out there when we should be taking advantage of God's blessings. We limit when we should Keep going. Don't stop pouring. God is wanting to give, but we keep getting in the way or giving up too soon. Are you believing big? 
Are you ready to start believing big? Some of you say, Brother Daniel, I'm doing all those things. Good for you. God bless you. And if you are doing all those things, you already know that then. Don't stop. Keep doing it. But I just believe that there's somebody here today that needs to hear this, just like I did. Don't, fall, don't stop short. Keep going. Let God do a work in you. Let's stand together. As our musicians come, I want to ask you one more question as we close today. What does your faith, what does your faith tell others about your God? Our God. It's up there on the screen most likely, yeah. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We're to be people who live a life of believing, not seeing. We don't live by sight. But the world, their message is exactly the opposite. I see this every day in college ministry. Now is what's important. What you feel now, what you can touch now with your bare hands, the physical is the most important thing. But God's Word teaches us something different. This physical body that we're in, this life, these structures that we build up for ourselves are fleeting and temporary. God cares about what's in your heart. God cares about what's in your soul. These are the things that are unseen. God cares about working in people's lives, and we don't always are aware of that. That's not the point of this miracle in 2 Kings. There's a reason she went inside privately. This miracle was for her and her family. And I'm sure she went out and told everybody about it. I would. But he first did a personal work in her life. God wants to do a personal work with, with you. And so when you're answering this question, are you believing big? As we sing this final song, I want you to think about that. Is God doing a personal work in your life? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? That's where that starts. Believe big that Jesus can save you and forgive you of your sins. He hasn't stopped doing that. There might be people not responding to the salvation, the gospel message, but God's still saving people. He wants to save you. And matter of fact, I can't think of a bigger miracle than when God saved me. That's a miracle I could never have done for myself. I couldn't have got myself in. I don't know about you, but I'm, I wasn't good enough for heaven. I wasn't good enough for God's grace. But God did a miracle in my life and saved me. I hope that he's done that with, for you. I hope that you're believing big. Let's pray and then we'll sing. Dear Heavenly Father God, I come before you grateful for this time with your people and your word. Lord, as we sing this closing song and as we ask ourselves this question, are we believing big, Lord? I hope that there's some people here today that are ready to respond and obey you, Lord. They're ready to start believing big. And if those here today that are already doing that, Lord, I pray that they keep on, that they're motivated to keep believing in you, our big God, our mighty God. So in the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the sin.